Hey everyone, it's Pacific, and welcome back to another episode of SCP Archives. I got a lot to talk about, and it's all very important, so stay with me. First, as some of you may know, it's my birthday this week. And every year around my birthday, I get a little introspective uh, and deeply, eternally grateful for everyone who tunes into the show. I talk a lot about this on a blog I just put up on Patreon. Um, It's a little introspective I like to do on my birthday every year uh, about how far I've come and where I'm heading next. And in that blog post, you're going to find a few um, little tidbits about a new season of SCP Archives coming this October. Uh, It's going to be a 10-part series, kind of like what we did with Serapis at the beginning of the year. We're doing that again, but with a new story about a new SCP, one that you're all very, very familiar with. I'll have more to announce about that uh, in the coming weeks, but next, I want to talk to you about Mayfair Watcher Society and Skin Crawl. These are two new shows I'm working on right now. Uh, They're in the middle of production, and I'm hoping they'll come out uh, this fall. I talk a lot about them on the blog, but just to give you a quick recap, uh, Mayfair Watcher Society is done in partnership with Trevor Henderson, who you might know as the iconic horror artist um, and creator of strange, terrifying monsters like Siren Head and Cartoon Cat. The other project, Skin Crawl, uh, is in collaboration with Skinner. He's an incredible psychedelic horror artist, and we're making a really cool special show. Uh, Again, more details about both of these on our blog on Patreon. Um, That'll be up on the 21st, so make sure you check it out. And if you want to stay up to date on all of these projects, uh, SCP Archives Special Season 6, Mayfair Watcher Society, and Skin Crawl, Follow me on Twitter at Pacific Obadiah or follow SCP at SCP underscore POD on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram, or everywhere that we can talk to people. And I think that's about it. But I hope you guys are all having a great week and thanks for listening. This is one of the coolest jobs in the entire world and I'm glad I get to do it every single day. So thank you. And now, this week's episode. Warning. The Foundation database is classified. Unauthorized access will result in detainment. Within this archive, you'll find the procedures, descriptions, and accounts of the most notorious anomalies we've encountered to date. Secure. Contain. Protect. Item number, SCP-5002. Object class, neutralized. Special containment procedures. The remains of SCP-5002 are to be held in a secure body tray in the Site-06 morgue. A further autopsy may be requested on the authority of the Department of Analytics. All materials associated with SCP-5002 are to remain in secure storage until approved for disposal. Description. An investigation into the death of SCP-5002 is ongoing. Furthermore, information in relation to SCP-5002, including records of the investigation to date, are available only to personnel with appropriate clearance. SCP-5002 was a type green reality-bending humanoid known as Emma Hastings. According to United Kingdom government records, SCP-5002 was born in 1978 and resided in Tewkesbury, England. SCP-5002 is self-employed as an author of detective fiction and published 10 novels through Jaffe Books. When SCP-5002 reread a published copy of one of its own works, events described in the text would occur in reality. Actual events would transpire in parallel with the narrative, with some altered details, for example names, dates, and locations, but a similar overall sequence of events. SCP-5002 claimed to be unaware of the anomaly before commencement of Foundation containment and testing. Foundation specialists detected the correspondence between UK police reports and works by SCP-5002 in January 2017, before public awareness of the anomaly. SCP-5002 was taken into Foundation custody on February 2017, and was contained in a standard humanoid containment cell in the Wing G of Site-06. On 14 December 2019, at approximately 7 a.m., 
SCP-5002 is discovered in bed, deceased. The containment cell was locked, and no evidence of force entry was found. Electronic records from the Wing G security station confirmed that the door was not unlocked at any stage over the preceding 12 hours, and the cell security cameras recorded only SCP-5002 in the cell during that period. Site-wide security reports showed that the Scranton Reality anchors installed in Wing G remained operational during this period. Agent Ellen O'Connor of the Department of Analytics was instructed to conduct an investigation into the neutralization of SCP-5002. Investigation Records SCP-5002 Investigation Update Presentation Date 16 December 2019 Location Site 06 Wing G Common Room Present Agent Ellen O'Connor, Department of Analytics Dr. Karen Yo, Senior Research, Site 06 Michael Simpson, Junior Researcher, Site 06 Officer Joseph Lowry, Security Officer, Wing G Dr. Nadine Grossenbacher Chief Medical Officer and Pathologist, Site-06. Director Evelyn May, Site Director, Site-06. D-4906, D-Class Personnel, Wing G. Recording commences. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Agent O'Connor, go ahead. Thank you, Site Director. Everyone, I appreciate you taking time out of your day. Huh? Shut it, you! Yeah, why is he here? He didn't come to yesterday's update. Michael, let Agent O'Connor speak. Sorry. No need to apologize, Dr. Yao. I understand his concern. Actually, there is someone even more unlikely that I would have included today, if it were possible. You don't mean- Indeed, I do, Dr. Yao. Yesterday's update was for the benefit of those Site-6 personnel with a connection to the containment of Emma Hastings. But today will be somewhat different. Today, with one exception, this room contains all of the people who were present in Wing G on the night that Miss Hastings was killed. You mean the night that SCP-5002 was neutralized? No. She was an anomalous human being, but she was nevertheless a human being. She deserves justice. And so today, I will prove that one of you was her killer. That can't be right. I thought- Director? If I may, let me start at the beginning, with the incident that led to SCP-5002's containment. Pre-containment media article, SCP-5002. Newspaper, London Evening Standard. Date, 5 January 2017. LSE murder, police baffled. London Metropolitan Police have admitted having no leads in the murder of PhD student Kate Holloway and have appealed to the public for any information which may assist in the investigation. Holloway, 23, was found beaten to death in her office at the London School of Economics last Monday. The office was locked from the inside and no murder weapon has been recovered. Police Commissioner Hogan Howe asked members of the public with any knowledge relevant to the case to come forward and create a dedicated phone number for anonymous tips. A source at the Met has described the killing as baffling and confessed that detectives are struggling to make progress. Private investigator Cameron Blackwell, known for solving the Kensington Diamond mystery, has been brought in to assist inquiries. Grieving parents Peter and Evelyn Holloway spoke at the press conference of their love for their daughter, describing her as remaining text irrelevant. Post-neutralization containment inventory, SCP-5002, date 14 December 2019. Prepared by Agent Ellen O'Connor, Analytics Department. Containment type Standard humanoid containment cell, Site 6, Wing G. Cell contained one SHCC fixed bed frame and built in mattress, one set SHCC bedding, blood stain throughout, one SHCC fixed table and seating. One built-in TV screen with remote. One Panasonic electronic typewriter. One set foundation safety stationary, all items accounted for. One typed manuscript, 432 pages. Four reams typewriter paper, blank, in original packaging. 150 sheets of paper, blank, containing holes, cut with scissors, and abstract block patterns. One bottle Jack Daniels whiskey. Three quarters empty. One set foundation basic women's clothing, size 8. All items accounted for. 
other than nightwear worn by deceased. SCP-5002, Neutralization Investigation Interview Transcripts Part 1. Interviewed, Security Officer Joseph Lowry. Thank you, Officer Lowry. Please, call me Joe. Officer Lowry, you are the regular overnight security official for Wing G. Is that correct? You can really call me Joe, you know. I'm trying to help here. Could you please answer the question, officer? Fine. Yes, I am usually employed on night duty. You want my employee number or what? No, thank you. And you discovered the body of SCP-5002 this morning, did you not? Yeah, that's right. Could you please describe how that occurred? Sure, lady. So I clock off at 7.30 a.m., but my last job is to get D-4986 from his cell and take him to the kitchenette for breakfast. At 7 a.m., I left the security station, walked past the containment cells to 4986's cell, then walked him back up towards the kitchen. D-4986 is held in Wing G itself. Is that usual? Not really, I guess. Most of the D-Class are in central accommodations, but he's been assigned to Wing G testing, so we have him in a spare containment chamber. I see. Was that Dr. Yao's decision? About the testing, yes. But all the room allocations come from Central. Meaning the site director? I suppose so. 4986 just lucked out with the low-risk humanoids, like the rest of us. I was walking back past the cells, rattling the doors and I... Sorry to interrupt, officer. Could you please explain what you mean by rattling the doors? Oh, right. I just kind of give them a quick shake. Check they're properly locked. It's a little habit of mine every time I walk past. Just making sure. Anyway, I got to SCP-5002 cell, and I noticed something odd. I understood that the door was locked. Yeah... Locked tight. No, the odd part was not hearing anything. Usually, 5002 would yell some shit at me when I'd come past. When she didn't, I got suspicious. Is it possible that she didn't hear you? No, I always give that bit. I give 5002's door an extra hard shake, you know. Nice and noisy. Hmm. I take it you didn't get along with SCP-5002? Oh, I see what you're trying to do. No, I didn't like her. No one here did. You asked Michael, asked 4986, SCP-5002 was a stuck-up... <sighs> she was a real piece of work. Thought she was better than anyone else here. She's so smart. Why is she in containment? Okay, so you didn't hear a response when you shook the door on your walk past? Not in either direction. I secured the D-Class, then opened the viewing plate to scp 5002 cell. I could see her lying in bed, but there was blood all over her blanket. Well, I didn't know it was blood yet, but it looked bad. What did you do next? I ran to Karen's room, that's Dr. Yao, and asked for her keycard. Then I went back to the containment chamber. Why did Dr. Yao give you her keycard? Isn't that a violation of security protocol? Not in an emergency, which this was. Anyway, I don't know what it's like where you work, but in this wing we're a team. We trust each other. Dr. Yao knows she can depend on me, and she was right behind me in any case. Now, can I tell you what I found, or do you want to ask more pointless questions? Please, go ahead. When I opened the containment cell, SCP-5002 didn't move. And before you ask, it's not a breach of containment procedures, because SCP-5002's anomaly only works when she's writing, which she clearly wasn't. And her cell has an SRA, too. I walked slowly to the bed, weapon drawn, but I could see there was a lot of blood. And she wasn't breathing. I checked her pulse. Nothing. So I rolled her over, and that's when Karen came in. She saw SCP-5002's chest and started screaming. Did you think her alarm was authentic? Of course. This is a rough job, and I've heard a lot of screams. Karen was shocked. She is always professional, but she has a kind heart. What happened next? I took Karen outside and calmed her down, and then I waited at the containment chamber while she went to the security station to call the site director and the medical officer. 
Interview Transcripts Part 2. Interviewed Chief Medical Officer Nadine Grossenbacher. Describe the scene when you arrived, please. I arrived at around 7.45. Joseph Lowry was waiting at the door of the containment chamber. Their D-class was secured in the hallway for some reason. He is an unpleasant man, I think. Much worse than the previous one. D-2825. <sighs> Poor girl. Lowry showed me the body of SCP-5002 lying on the bed. He took the D-class away and came back later while I examined the corpse. I noticed a large amount of dried blood on the blankets, particularly on the area around SCP-5002's torso. In your opinion, what was the likely cause of death? I am yet to conduct a full autopsy, but my opinion at this time is that the victim died from severe trauma to the heart and lungs caused by multiple stab wounds. I would estimate SCP-5002 was stabbed at least ten times in the chest, neck, and shoulder. Probably by a right-handed individual? Slightly taller than her? Very perceptive of you. Yes, that would be my hypothesis, based on the wounds. Not that it helps much in narrowing the list of suspects. Could you let me know the type of weapon that was likely used? Certainly. It appears that the victim was stabbed with a sharp, pointed blade. Not terribly long. Something like your scalpel, then? <laughs> Perhaps, detective. I would think a common kitchen knife is just as likely. Indeed. Did you observe anything else unusual in your examination of the body? No. I could see no obvious defensive wounds. I surmise that the assailant either knows the victim or surprised and overpowered her. I had just finished this check when Dr. Yao arrived. It had been some time, then, since she called you to Wing Ji? Yes, she was away reporting to the site director. I can imagine that would have not been comfortable, especially given the director's views on SCP-5002. Could you elaborate, please? Of course. I understand that the site director had a particular interest in SCP-5002, and that Dr. Yao was under quite some pressure to produce results. We're all under pressure, Doctor. Do you really think this was unusual? How should I say this? Agent, there are some confidencies which I cannot betray, but I recognize the importance of your work. All I can say is to encourage you in strong terms to speak to the site director about this matter and her involvement with this wing. Certainly Dr. Yao appeared rather upset when I saw her. Interesting. Finally, Doctor, could you please let me know your estimate for the time of death? Again, this will be more accurate once the autopsy is complete, but for present purposes, I would estimate that SCP-5002 was killed between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. last night. And where were you between those times? Very good. <laughs> I was sleeping, Detective. In my room in the medical wing. And I'm afraid you will have to take my word for it. There are still some areas of this building which are free from those staring cameras. Thank God. Something to hide, Doctor? Of course not. I have no secrets. This is the Foundation, Doctor. Everyone has secrets. Has secrets. Interview Transcripts Part 3 Interviewed Security Officer Joseph Lowry Tell me about the Wing G Security Station, please. No problem. It sits on the corner, so I have a clear view of both hallways down past the containment chamber toward the main doors, and in the other direction towards the staff quarters and the kitchenette. I have video screens of each of the containment chambers. The system keeps a record of any keycard access, both to the cells and the main doors to Wing G. You mentioned that your shift ends at 7.30 a.m. What time did you start last night? 11.30 p.m., same as always. Oh, that's a long shift. You were at the station the whole time? Yes. Well... Except for my smoke break. What time was that? Don't give me that look. This is low-risk containment, and Dr. Yao approved it. Everyone knows I go at 2 a.m. every night. I have a smoke. I come back. No problem. And how long would you say you were away last night? Ten, maybe fifteen minutes. Same as any night. And once I lock the main doors behind me, no one can get into Wing G without my buzzer going off so I'd know about it. So no one outside could have accessed Wing Ji while you were gone? It could only have been someone already inside? No. Unless, well, level 5 clearance, perhaps. I don't know whether I get notified of that. It's never come up. 
Speaking of clearance, tell me about the key cards. You have access to the main doors, but not the containment chambers, right? Except for the D-class cells, yeah, that's right. Karen is the only one with keycard access to the skips. And did she access them last night? No. The door records are clear for the whole night. I checked before you arrived. We have to send records up to Central each day. Between the start of my shift and when I fetched D4986 in the morning, none of the cells were unlocked, and I was the only one to open the main doors at 2 a.m., like I said. To be honest, I didn't see anyone last night. I think Karen and Mitchell had gone to their rooms before I started. How about the cameras? Nothing out of the ordinary. SCP-5002 was asleep when I got in. The day guard said she'd gone to bed around 11 p.m. SCP-9 and SCP-9 were quiet in their cells. D-4986 wasn't doing much. The whole thing makes no sense. SCP-5002 cell was locked. The wing was locked. I didn't see anyone. The camera didn't see anyone. How the hell was she killed? That's why I'm here, officer. Really? You Sherlock Holmes or something? Actually, Foundation investigations are rather more difficult. Sherlock Holmes, unlike me, could afford to eliminate the impossible. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Agent. I thought you should know. We found one of the staff trying to leave Wing G without your permission. You know, now that I think of it, maybe Karen made a copy of her keycard so someone else could have had access to SCP-5002. Really? Who was that? Michael Simpson. Mike Simpson. Interview Transcripts Part 4. Interviewed. Junior Researcher Michael Simpson. This is ridiculous. You can't just lock me up in here like some kind of D-class. I'm sorry, Michael. Can I call you Michael? Unfortunately, I can't let anyone leave Wing G until I finish my interviews. You understand, right? But when will you be finished? I have an urgent appointment scheduled for this morning. Could you let me know who it's with? Perhaps I can help reschedule it. No. S sorry, I'm afraid. It's a private matter. A classified matter. I can't discuss it. Okay, that's fine. I understand. Well, shall we speak now? Try to get things over with more quickly? Uh-huh, yeah. That would be good. Thanks. No problem, Michael. Let's start with last night. Where were you between midnight and this morning? I was in my quarters, working late on my thesis. It's due in a few months' time. Can't be easy. Working on that at the same time as research. And how about this morning, when SCP-5002 was discovered? I was in the kitchenette, finishing breakfast. I heard Joe shaking SCP-5002's door both times. From the kitchenette? He must really be quite loud, then. Yeah, you'd hear it anywhere. It's a bit annoying, actually. Although, it's weird. What is, Michael? Oh, nothing. Just uh, thinking about how sound travels. After the door banging, I heard running in the corridor. Then Karen screamed. Interesting. And you were in the kitchenette this whole time. You know that we found one of the kitchen knives in the dishwasher there. Did you use it? What? No, I mean... It was there when I got there. I never touched it. Okay, no problem. Unfortunately, it had been through full cycle, so it was nice and clean. And after you heard Dr. Yao's scream? I went down to the containment chamber, and Joe was holding Karen by the shoulders, trying to keep her calm. D-4986 said something. I didn't hear what. Joe wouldn't let me into the containment chamber, but what I saw, uh, even it doesn't deserve that. It? You mean SCP-5002? Funny. Everyone else here uses her name, or at least gives her a personal pronoun. I know what they do, but that's not what they are, is it? They're not people. They're not our friends. They're anomalies. That seems a little harsh. It's protocol. That thing is SCP-5002. No different from SCP-1571 or SCP-1207 or any of the other anomalies in containment. Just because it moves and talks doesn't mean it should be treated differently. I take it you didn't have a close relationship with SCP-5002? 
I conducted intensive testing with the entity over an extended period, that's all. Hmm. You're right about an extended period. Testing had been going on for some time. Was Dr. Yao under pressure to produce some results? Maybe. I saw a few memos from the director which seemed a bit over the top, requesting updates, samples. I don't know what. Karen doesn't really get stressed, though. She's a great boss, probably the best supervisor I've had. She gets me properly involved in the research and lets me work independently. Is that why she gave you a copy of her key card? Oh, yeah, I guess so. But I've almost never used it. It's just... Just in case. It... Yeah. All right. Why don't you tell me a little more about your testing with SCP-5002? Extract of SCP-5002 testing. Video transcript. Test number SCP-5002-7-R. Date, 14 May 2017. Location, Site-06, Wing G Secure Lab. Present, Dr. Kieran Yao, Senior Researcher, Site-06. Michael Simpson, Junior Researcher, Site-06. Officer Joseph Lowry, Security Officer, Wing G. D-2825, D-Class Personnel, Wing G. SCP-5002 Test Techs. The D-Class then walked over to the machine and pressed the buttons in the following order. Red, green, red, green, 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 red, red, green, red, red, green, and then she stopped. Video commences. Dr. Yao and J.R. Simpson stand in the Wing G Secure Lab. Next to them, SCP-5002 sits at a lab bench. Test number SCP-5002-7R, 14 May 2017. Time is 11.45 p.m. D-2825 speaks from off-camera. Why are... Why are we doing this at night time? Ow! So you get the pleasure of my company, Missy. Gently Joe. Sorry, Doctor. Please do call me Karen. And it's okay. D-2825 has done this before. She knows the procedure. Although we've decided night testing is probably best to minimize any risk of interference from the other ontological anomalies on the site. Secure Lab SRAs are offline. This test will focus on two factors. Firstly, the presence of the entity in the same physical space as the test subject, and also the possibility of the entity employing a multi-use text. You can use her name, Michael. J.R. Simpson adjusts the camera so that both SCP-5002 and D-2825 are in shot. Officer Lowry stands next to the D-Class. There's a table placed one meter in front of D-2825, close to camera. On top of the table is a black box with two electronic buttons. Red and green. Joe, please release D-2825 from her restraints. She was behaving weirdly in her cell earlier. Are you sure that's wise? It's fine, Joe. Please, go ahead. You're the boss, Doctor. Uh, Karen. Officer Lowry removes the handcuffs and steps away from D-2825, who remains still. J.R. Simpson places a small bomb booklet on the bench in front of SCP-5002 avoiding physical or eye contact with SCP-5002. The entity will now read the prepared test text. Really, Michael? Would you please? SCP-5002 opens a booklet and reads a test text. D-2825 walks the electronic box, presses the buttons in the sequence described in the text. That is fascinating. I can't believe what you've made me write from a punctuation perspective, but it's extraordinary to see that in action. Test participants shall remain silent at all times. Forgive my colleague. How do you feel, dear? I feel okay, I guess. What is she reading? The story of your life, it seems. Has she been here for all my previous readings? The entity will now reread the same text. SCP-5002 stares at J.R. Simpson, then looks down and reads from the booklet. B-2825 remains still, watching SCP-5002. No effect. That is in accordance with our hypothesis. You think it only happens once per book? Test participants shall remain silent at all times. Tell me, researcher, are you a test participant? Detective Lowry laughs. Dr. Yao smiles. J.R. Simpson snatches a booklet from the lab bench. 
The entity will now read a separate copy of the same text. J.R. Simpson places a second booklet on the lab bench. SCP-002 picks it up and begins to read. D-2825 remains standing near the table and does not touch the buttons. No effect from separate copies. We have to assume it is reading as instructed. I think that is a safe assumption, Michael. Then we will proceed with this evening's final test. J.R. Simpson takes a second booklet from the bench and marks it using a standard foundation redaction pen. J.R. Simpson then holds the booklet open to the camera. The redacted test text reads as set out below. D-Class. Walked. To. Machine. Pressed. Buttons. The. Order. Green. 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 Red. Red. Green. Then. Stopped. J.R. Simpson checks the redactions with Dr. Yao then places a redacted text in front of SCP-5002. The entity will now read the redacted test text. God, what a mess. Yes, yes, participant silent. I get it. SCP-5002 reads from the redacted booklet. D-2825 presses the buttons on the black box in the following order. Green, 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 red, red, green. This matches the redacted text of the booklet. D-2825's movements appear jerky and uncoordinated. Reading of amended text successfully reproduced the anomalous effect. Wonderful. That opens up a new avenue to consider. How are you feeling? D-2825 appears to be weeping. (laughs) I didn't want to touch the buttons, but I did. (laughs) Why did I touch them? (laughs) What did she do? (laughs) The test is now complete. Officer, you may restrain the D-Class. Officer Lowry moves forward to handcuff D-2825. She attempts to resist, but is successfully restrained. (laughs) No, the test isn't over. I don't want to (laughs) go. Don't send me back there. (laughs) I told you she was trouble. Can you take her back to her cell? Carefully, please. Of course. I've got her. Thank you, Joe. You're most welcome. Officer Lowry leaves the room with D-2825, who struggles weakly. Poor thing. I might call Dr. Grossenbacher. Michael, can you escort Miss Hastings back to her chamber? J.R. Simpson appears briefly shocked. He then gestures for SCP-5002 to follow him from the lab and walks to the camera to turn it off. I wonder what would have happened if she had been restrained when I started reading. Video ends. Interview transcripts part four. Interviewed. Senior Researcher Karen Yao. Hey everyone, Pacific here with a quick ad break and a reminder. Ad-free episodes are available at our Patreon at patreon.com slash scp underscore pod. And now, back to the episode. Thank you for your time, Dr. Yao. Can I start by asking for your thoughts about SCP-5002? As an anomaly or as a pest subject? Whichever you prefer. Well, the anomaly is a bit finicky. It took us some time to work out how to elicit the effect, what precisely led to the written work being instantiated. Any new written works are produced in containment, subject to the reality anchor, and are only sent for publication once they have been thoroughly reviewed by us and cross-checked by RISA to make sure they have no unintended consequences. It's very time-consuming. I saw there was a manuscript recovered from the containment chamber. Yes. SCP-5002 had written a novel. We suggested it, thought it might allow for more detailed analysis— While it would take time to prepare, a more substantial work could shed some light on the level of specificity in which the anomaly manifests in reality. I can't believe what we've lost, in terms of the research time. What was the novel about? Not something from her usual oeuvre, of course, for safety's sake. We needed something we could test, so it was about the daily life and psychology of a D-class subject. Nothing violent or dramatic. It was... Slower, more meditative than her other books. Almost pastoral. And she didn't have any unauthorized written work? Nothing resembling the events of her death? No. We really were quite careful about that. This was completely shocking. 
So it didn't resemble any of her past work either? Not in any detail. In any case, the effect only works once for each written work that SCP-5002 reads after publication. Rereading the same thing won't repeat the anomaly. How was SCP-5002 as his test subject? She was cooperative with experimentation. Even collaborative. She appeared relatively well-adjusted for containment. No history of aggression or escape attempts. Intelligent. Honest. Self-assured. It almost sounds as if you liked her, Dr. Yao. <coughs> I dare say, if the circumstances had been different, I might have, Agent O'Connor. Did you give her any special privileges? What do you mean? The Jack Daniels in her cell. Was that your authorization? No, absolutely not. I try to treat my subjects fairly, Agent O'Connor, but I'm not stupid. Emma never had access to alcohol or drugs of any kind. We search her cell regularly, and I'm sure no one in my team would have given them to her. Not everyone in your team got along with her, did they? You mean Joe? Oh, he acts tough. Likes to wind the skips up now and then, but he's a big softy, really. He wouldn't do, well, anything like this. And Michael Simpson? He <laughs> seemed very cold towards SCP-5002. Yes, I guess he was. It's funny. He never spoke with her outside testing, never called her Emma. I would have said he was just the straight-laced type, but he wasn't always like that. No? When he first joined me, he was more relaxed. Something changed a few weeks after he started, after Emma arrived. Like he withdrew. Do you know why? I'm afraid not. I was worried for him, but there was nothing in his regular psych tests. Other than a bit of stress. Could I have a copy of this test, please? Sorry. I review them, but then they're held centrally. You could ask the site director, maybe. That reminds me. Michael Stress. Could it have been from pressure to get results on SCP-5002? <laughs> I don't know about that. We work hard, but we try not to apply too much pressure here. Not from the site director? No. Not that I noticed. Are you sure? The medical officer mentioned something. Dr. Grossenbacher might be thinking of another wing. She's always on the move, in and out. Is she in Wing G regularly? <sighs> Just now and then, any bangs or scrapes the skips might get. It's much less often since she was promoted to CMO for the whole site. That was quite a recent promotion, yes, and rapid. What is your opinion on her work? I think she has been excellent. She is responsive, helpful, her psyche evals are fair, and she accepts my input. And she genuinely cares about people, which I respect. We had a D class last year, D2825, who suffered a breakdown. Horrible, really. Screaming, unable to sleep. Eventually she had to be replaced, but Dr. Grossenbacher did great work with her. She was here quite a lot back then. But Dr. Grossenbacher doesn't have access to Wing G. No. She buzzes in at the main doors like everyone else. Right. You and Officer Lowry are the only ones with access to the security system. That's correct. Joe has read access only for the cameras and door records, and I have the only key card for the containment cells. Except for the one you gave to Michael? Oh, yes. Sorry. But he never uses it. I don't think I've ever seen it on the records. And he couldn't have lost it? No, I'm sure he's more careful than that. Hmm. Okay. Could you please talk me through your movements last night and this morning? Yes. I was back in my quarters before Joe came on shift. I probably went to sleep around midnight, maybe a little after. And you didn't come out of your room after that time? No one came in? You didn't hear anything? No, no. I woke up at 6.30 and was just cleaning my teeth when Joe knocked hard on the door... He asked for my key card, said there was an emergency with SCP-5002. I gave him the card, spat out my toothpaste, and followed him down the corridor. I... when I... Take your time, Dr. Yao. It was horrible. I screamed, I think, when I saw her. All the blood. You must think I'm pathetic, but it's a pretty quiet life on Wing G. We don't usually... I haven't. Nothing like that. 
Joe must have walked me out. I, I remember his hands on my shoulders. He was saying something. My head was spinning. I saw Michael run up. And then I heard him. Who? D4986. Agent O'Connor, I don't like to point fingers, but I know I'm right about this. I will never forget the look on his face and what he said. Looks like that bitch got what was coming to her. That's hardly evidence, Doctor. Oh, I know that. But tell me, do you know why he ended up as a D-class? Interview transcripts. Interviewed. D4986. Seven convictions for murder. One for aggravated assault and wounding. Three other murders suspected but not charged. All stabbed multiple times in the chest and belly. Yeah, that's right. I've done them all. And believe you me, I'd do it again. Every fucking one of them deserve what they got. <laughs> Did you kill SCP-5002? Did I kill SCP-5002? No. No. No, I did not. No. But you wanted her dead. <laughs> ah, fuck yes. I'm glad she's dead. I would have killed her if I could. Why is that? You're asking me why. Jesus, why the fuck do you think? That bitch spent the last year torturing me. I hate her. What do you mean, torturing you? You seen these tests, have you? She's a monster. I don't let no one push me around, but her, if she read it in one of her books, she could make me do anything. Anything. What things? Anything. Running on a treadmill until I collapsed. I said all sorts of bollocks I would never say. She made me fall asleep in the middle of one afternoon, and I, every time it felt like I was choosing it, I thought I was in control, but it was always her. That vindictive shit, and yow. Call me Karen, but they were in it together. What do you mean by that? She was helping Yao, suggesting new tests, humiliating things. She would make me cry and beg forgiveness or start to strip off in the lab. She made me grab a wire. I, I thought I was electrified. One test she read aloud just so I would know she was forcing me to move. I think she got off on it. And you hated her for it. Yeah, but you don't get it. I didn't just hate her. I was fucking terrified of her. I wasn't me anymore. One time I lost it, refused to leave myself, fought the guard, chucked up my breakfast afterwards. I found out it was all her. All of it. Something she wrote. Some nonsense that she wrote. Just something she wrote. That proper messed me up. How could I trust anything? I couldn't trust myself. I mean, I mean, no wonder the D2825 went batshit. How would you be if every action, every decision, every thought could have been put there by someone else? So of course I'm glad she's dead. Finally, I know for sure that this is me. But you didn't kill her? No. Where were you last night? I was in my cell. Where the fuck else would I be? They got cameras, don't they? Before today, when were you last in the kitchenette? I, I don't know. Is the dinner last night? Did you take a knife from the kitchen? No. There's the guard watching me, and they do them checks on my cell. What is your opinion of Joseph Lowry? Well, he's not as mean as some of them, but he's, he's an asshole. Although, never when Yao's around. The, the fucking suck-up. Why are you asking me this shit? Someone was stabbed to death, and you're the only knife murderer around here. So you say, well, what if that bitch made me do those murders too? And anyway, I was locked in myself. 5002 was locked in hers, and no one has a key. Shouldn't you be talking to that fucker who can walk through walls? Hmm? Come on. Item number SCP. One. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures, SCP-1 is to be held in a standard humanoid containment chamber fitted with a Scranton Reality Anchor which is to be active at all times. In case of SRA malfunction or ineffectiveness, SCP-1 is to be immediately sedated and kept under sedation until effective containment can be reconstituted. Description 
SCP-1000. Is a 34-year-old humanoid entity capable of phasing through solid matter at will. SCP-1000 was known as Robert Gates and was resident in Carlisle, United Kingdom. SCP-1000. Anomalous properties are limited to its body and clothing and do not extend other objects. Testing has not revealed any limits to the material through which SCP-1000 can pass without effect. For full details, please review test logs A through K below. Prior to Foundation Containment, SCP-1000 was implicated in the attacks of more than 30 women. The victims were typically assaulted in their homes, with no evidence of entry or egress by SCP-1000. Several victims were attacked on multiple occasions over a period of weeks or months. SCP-1000 displays evidence of pronounced antisocial personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder. I know why you're here. Do you? You want to know whether I killed her, Emma. Whether I slid that knife between her ribs and watched her life pour out. Are you trying to impress me with how much you know? Are you trying to conceal your fear by acting tough? People talk, detective. Especially when they're around what they think of as animals. A furniture. And you want to be recognized as human? Oh, I'm quite comfortable being called an animal. Especially by prey. Even a predator is harmless if it is caged. And you think I'm caged, do you? You think I can't walk out of here whenever I want? Do whatever I want? Your testing log suggests otherwise. Your precious reality anchors, I presume. I can tell you what they're worth, detective. Then why not leave right now? Impress me. You tell yourself that I can't, but there's a part of you that isn't sure. You actually want me to show you. Even if I walk straight through that wall, at least you have certainty. You have something to hold on to. But I can't be held, detective. I don't want you impressed. I want you doubting. That sounds like an excuse. Then why is your voice wavering? Everyone thinks you can conceal it, but predators sense fear. You can't hide from me, detective. No one can. Did you kill Emma Hastings? Mm, right to the point. No smart comments. Fine, I can satisfy your curiosity. No, I did not kill her. Frenzied stabbing is not really my style. It's so erratic, so uncontrolled. Did you attack her? No. Her anomaly was quite limited, but there was no need to risk interaction with it. There are plenty of weaker targets here for me. Plenty that no one will miss. You were scared of her then? <clears throat> no, detective. But I have read her test logs. Dr. Yao really shouldn't leave files lying around in her quarters at night. Emma might have tried to threaten me with her abilities such as they were. I wasn't scared of her, but she wouldn't have been afraid of me. And it's fear that you want, of course. Of course. You can't possibly know what it's like, knowing that those women are always thinking of me, looking for me, never feeling safe, not behind walls, not at any time. I break them, and I can watch them crumble, because of me. I'm a part of them, always. You're a sick bastard. That sounded quite emotional, Detective. Are you imagining how they felt? Do you want to know how it feels? That's enough. You're no use to me. Interview Transcripts Part 6 Interviewed Site Director Evelyn May Sorry to disturb you, Director. No, it's fine, Agent. I appreciate the importance. It's just... <laughs> Have you ever had too much to manage, be completely worn out, and then more and more disasters pile up? I mean, yesterday someone opened a way just outside the site grounds. A massive security risk. I can tell you no one went in or out, but it's still a huge amount of paperwork. Anyway, that's not your problem. How can I help? Well, it's a slightly sensitive matter. I'm wondering whether you could authorize me to review the SRA records for Wing G. I want to see whether there have been any malfunctions or unusual activity. How did... Oh, of course she did. She got what she wanted. I guess you may as well know. Risa will have my ass for this either way. This is purely for my investigation. <sighs> yes, there have been some issues with the anchors in Wing G. Some malfunctions, even some outright failures. I admit I have been limiting dissemination of that information. 
editing the security reports. I didn't think there would be any problems, but now, God, do you think it's connected? That Gates had something to do with SCP-5002's murder? I'm not sure. SCP-106 could go through walls, but he couldn't have brought a knife with him. Perhaps it was already in the cell? Uh, SCP-5002 may have stolen it. Perhaps. But I'd like to review the records in any case. I'll see what I can do. Um, I can tell you that there was never an issue with SCP-5002's anchor. The inside of her cell was anomaly free. The inside of her cell? What about the walls? Mm, no, I don't think the anchors extend beyond the chamber interior. But the SRA issues only affected other cells. Uh, SCP-2366, SCP-4785, some of the unoccupied chambers, perhaps. SCP-5002 is definitely contained. The records should confirm that. Thanks. Can I also request the latest psychiatric evaluations from Wing Ji? I can get you the summaries, at least. May I ask why you need them? Dr. Yao mentioned that her junior researcher might be under some stress. <laughs> that sounds like Karen. Always the soft heart. I had the impression that the source of that stress might be you. Did you put pressure on Dr. Yao and her team to get results from SCP-5002? Requests for updates, memos, that sort of thing? Maybe. But I don't think it was anything beyond the ordinary. It's not like Karen's results have been immediate, but I have no issue with that at all. Despite your connection with SCP-5002? I read you were part of the team that identified Emma Hastings as the source of anomalous effects, and you supervised her original recovery. I've been involved in the analysis and recovery of many anomalies over my career, Agent. I hope you're not accusing me of anything. I'd just like to rule you out. Your clearance means that you have access to the containment chambers and the security records across all wings. But only once the camera footage and door records are sent up from the wings. If I had been there, Karen and the security officer would have seen me on film and seen my keycard access. I hadn't realized that. Thank you for your help, Director. Finally, just for completeness, could you please tell me where you were after midnight on the 14th? I was traveling, back from a meeting in London. I arrived back at the site at around, uh, 3 a.m. Can your driver confirm that? I wasn't using my driver, Agent. This was a private meeting. Ah, I'm sorry. May I ask who the meeting was with? It was nothing to do with the Foundation. I would like to confirm with any attendees, if possible. Fine. I am surprised Nadine didn't tell you this as well. If you must know, I was meeting with my divorce lawyer. The mediation is coming up in the new year, and he wanted to plan. I'll give you his details. I'm sorry to pry, Director. No, it's okay. I know. It's your job. It's just I'm tired. You know, Peter and I, we haven't. We weren't able to. We lost our daughter, Agent O'Connor. He has tried. We both did. But, well, <laughs> mediation is in January. So I was in London and then back to the site. And then to sleep? Eventually, yes. Until the alarm at six and the next day's catastrophes to deal with. <laughs> Would you believe I already had three other emergencies on my desk by the time Dr. Yell called? That's a lot in just an hour. No, it was a bit longer than that. Karen didn't call until after half seven, maybe a little after. Really? The body was discovered just after 7 a.m. I thought Dr. Yao had called you immediately. No, I'm quite sure it was later. You said she might have been stressed. If she was, perhaps she put off calling me? Hmm. I might need to check with her. SCP-5002 interview transcripts. Extracted. Interview number. SCP-5002-56. Date. 6 May 2019. Interviewer. Dr. Karen Yao. How do you feel the novel is coming along? Not bad. It's hard to tell until it's finished, but I am relatively satisfied so far. Of course, it's only for an audience of two. <laughs> 
Is that important to you? How your readers react? Yes and no. I started writing because I needed to, but I would be lying if I said I didn't savor the reaction of a captivated reader. Sometimes it's like I'm writing two things simultaneously, one for the audience and a more personal meaning for myself. Are you saying you understood the effect of what you were writing? That you were creating events for yourself? You ask that question a great deal. I find it increasingly important. And you keep avoiding it. Were you deliberately controlling the characters in your novels? Who controls whom? If a musician plays a piece, we don't say that the composer controlled the notes that we hear. My characters are just lines of music, and the readers bring them to life. You're saying that the reader manipulates the characters. But surely the author manipulates the reader. That depends on the author. I always like to keep my audience guessing, but also play fair with them. Then did you know what your writing was doing? Does any author know what effect their work will have once they emancipate it? Did Shakespeare know? Did Virginia Woolf? And Frank? Once a writer puts down their pen, all responsibility rests with the reader. But in this case, you are the reader as well. I guess you're not going to tell me. Only because you so love asking. Fine. If you're going to be like that, we can talk about something else. How have you found writing a novel in an unaccustomed genre? Well, it's certainly a blessed relief to compose something more thematically challenging than Red Button, Green Button. <laughs> Had you tried other genres before? I found that the reading public has certain expectations and it's difficult to contradict them. If they buy an Emma Hastings novel, they expect crime and investigation, not romance or high fantasy. If I didn't put a murder in, they would complain about its absence, and if I included it as a twist, they would complain that it didn't fit the genre. There was no winning. So, no aliens committing the crime then? <laughs> Not if I knew what was good for me. With detective fiction, the simplest solution is usually the best. Money, love, revenge, those are motives for murder, at least in stories. Anything else creates more questions than it answers. So you were never tempted to write something completely different? I once outlined an idea for a conspiracy thriller, but my publisher was having none of it. Dramatic irony being what it is, the conspiracy thriller I ended up living in was far beyond my imagining. I hope you understand why we have to keep you here. Absolutely. I prefer freedom, yes, but I can apprehend the importance of what you do here. And there are benefits to this life. I have learned a number of surprising things about myself. My work is appreciated, even demanded. I don't have to worry about village gossip or that of the literary press. Not everyone is necessarily sociable, of course. Oh, Michael and Joe are rude. But they'll come around. I know them. Just give them time. I don't care, honestly. One source of intelligent conversation is enough for anyone. Was that a compliment? Thank you. Don't get used to them. Well, shall I let you get back to your work? Thank you. It's a tricky section. I can write the test subject protagonist, I believe, but he needs a scene with a kindly scientist. I'm just not sure she's very convincing. <laughs> Enjoy. Let me know if you need any input. SCP-5002 Investigation Update Presentation Continued Date 16 December 2019 Location Site 06 Wing G Common Room Brings us back to today and to me Sitting in a room full of liars Excuse me? For instance... Officer Lowry was lying about a smoke break. What the hell do you mean by that? I think you were gone for longer than you said, officer. And you were drinking. I was not! It's boring in the middle of the night. You wanted to get a buzz on, and you had your Jack Daniels to do it. Normally, you'd smuggle the bottle out at the end of your shift, but when you discovered SCP-5002, you realized they would search the entire wing. You panicked, and you hid the bottle in the containment chamber while Dr. Grossenbaker was examining the body. No. The bottle is not on the cell's camera feed from overnight, 
but it does show up later in the morning. Just after you were there, you can try to lie to me, but it will not work. In fact, the only person who didn't lie to me is a murderer. What are you saying? I'm saying that out of everyone here, only D4986 told me the truth. You are a killer, but you said that you didn't kill SCP-5002. And I believe you. Ha! You be the first. Then you suspect SCP-5002 was the murderer. <laughs> it's funny you should mention him. The thing is, when everyone is lying, their lies contradict each other. And those contradictions can paint a picture. Even your studied weariness, Director, was a friend. At least in part. Although I'm sure it is quite tiring to be the subject of blackmail. Blackmail? For what? Better to ask, by who? Someone who worked in wings across the site. Who could see evidence of SRA failures being covered up. Someone who had evidence that SCP-106 had been breaching containment. Someone who could trace D-2825's mental breakdowns back to the continual attacks by SCP-106. Someone like Dr. Grossenbaker. This is ludicrous. Come now. The director basically told me that you knew about the SRA failures. I assume this is the reason behind your sudden promotion to chief medical officer? Yes. God, yes. She told me she would inform Risa that I had been doctoring the security records, putting staff at risk. She insisted on being made head of medical for the site. Shy's girl. You were lucky, Director. Just imagine what she would have asked you for if she knew what you were really up to. What? The reality anchors weren't malfunctioning. Were they, Director? Malfunctions should be randomly distributed. But, as you said, SCP-5002's chamber was never compromised. And yet, SCP-106 had clearly escaped regularly. He admitted it. And his series of attacks on D-2825 confirms it. I think you were deliberately shutting down his SRA. Letting him escape. There were just enough other errors to deflect suspicion, but never risking SCP-5002's containment. And you controlled room allocations. You must have placed SCP-106 in Wing G, even though he's hardly a low-risk humanoid. You wanted him to attack SCP-5002. You wanted him to hurt her, to terrorize her. Jesus! Emma, you monster. That is an extremely serious allegation, Agent. I hope you can support it with more than speculation. You always showed an interest in SCP-5002. But you were relaxed about Dr. Yao's slow progress. You just wanted to know that SCP-5002 was suffering. Level 5 access. I never would have- why? I didn't know that until I spoke to the director's divorce lawyer. He confirmed that she was in London the night of the killing. He also confirmed that she changed her name back to her maiden name. Evelyn May was previously Eve Holloway, mother of Kate Holloway, murdered in 2017 as a result of SCP-5002's anomaly. I don't know what strings you had to pull to try to get your revenge, Director, but I don't think her death will bring you any peace. You don't know anything. My baby was murdered! That animal could die a thousand times and it would never be enough. How can you say that about her? How can you say her, Michael? Oh, shit. After all, it wasn't the director who brought a knife into SCP-5002's containment, did she? I, I didn't. I... You kept up that stony facade for a while, Michael. But now the cracks are showing. All that stress you were under. It wasn't from your thesis. You were fine until you got assigned to anomalous humanoid testing. And then something changed. Dr. Yao treated them like people. And you realized that they were. 
I think it crossed a line for you. I think you joined the serpent's hand. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh. How do you know? <laughs> I wasn't entirely sure, but it fits. He was so startled when I mentioned the knife, and he remembered seeing it in the dishwasher. For him, that was unexpected. He just happened to have an urgent personal appointment immediately after the murder, on the same day away mysteriously appears next to the site. That was his escape route. He was meant to break SCP-5002 out, maybe some other skips, and then disappear the next morning in the confusion. Then why did he kill her? I think you waited up that night, Michael. Everyone knew that Officer Lowry would take a smoke break at 2 a.m. And you knew he would rattle the door to SCP-5002 cell as he left. That was your signal. You took the knife from the kitchen and used your copy of the key card to open the chamber. You knew it would show up on the security report. But you assumed you'd be long gone by then. But it didn't show up. I'm getting to that. You offered SCP-5002 the knife for protection. Didn't you, Michael? And then you told her to escape before Officer Lowry came back. But she wouldn't leave. Would she? No, no, she refused. And I think she told you why. Yes, I'm sorry, Karen. I kept asking her to go, and then she said... She said that she wanted to stay because she was sleeping with Dr. Yao. Exactly. Say for God's sake! Quiet, quiet, everyone. There's more to be said. Michael... Once SCP-500 told you, you left the containment chamber. You were flustered. You rushed straight back to your room. And you left the knife behind. Yes, that's right. Did SCP-5002 tell you that she had slept with Dr. Yao that same evening? Karen! You don't understand. Emma and I were in love. She, She was a wonderful woman. Your research made slow progress, just to keep Emma near you. How long had you been seeing her? Three months? Four? Long enough how to work out how to edit the camera system in advance, so it looked like she was alone in her cell every night? Strange. I wouldn't have looked at the footage so closely if I hadn't been trying to work out where the Jack Daniels bottle had come from. Damn. And you had access to the security system. So you could clear any key card access before the records were submitted to Central. I presume that's why it took you so long to call the director on the morning of the murder. You saw that Michael had opened SCP-5002 cell. Perhaps you were trying to decide whether to risk exposing your secret in order to implicate him. I saw he had unlocked the cell, but I knew he couldn't have killed Emma. I wanted to talk to him, but there was no time. I think you must have almost run into each other that night. You were in the containment chamber with Emma before Officer Lowry started to shift. You heard him rattle the door as he left at 2 a.m., just like Michael did. That was your signal to leave. You must have returned to your room just as Michael left his. Perhaps you passed him while he was in the kitchen getting the knife. And then what, she went back later and stabbed the bitch in her sleep? I don't think so. Thwarted love is a good motive for murder, but SCP-5002 wasn't stabbed in her sleep. There was blood all over her bedclothes, not just near the wound. That's right. It's more likely that she was stabbed standing up, then wrapped in the sheets and dragged back to the bed. And there's something you've all forgotten. Something that Dr. Yao missed when she wiped the security records. Do you ever get to the point? What do you mean? When I left, I didn't lock the cell door. Correct. Like leaving the knife behind, you forgot in your rush. Until you realized in your interview, and you knew something was wrong. For God's sake, what? Michael signaled to move. Dr. Yao signaled to leave. Was Officer Lowry rattling the containment door on his way out to smoke. But Officer Lowry shook the door every time he passed it. In both directions. Oh. He came back from his break, shook the door, and found it was open. And you went inside, didn't you, officer? Answer her. 
you were a little drunk. You started arguing with SCP-5002. Officer Lowry? And she told you. About her and Dr. Yao. Joe? She flaunted it at you. And you couldn't take it. You grabbed the knife and- You're just like her, you know. You think you're so fucking smart. You think you're so much better than me, just because you went to college and I'm some night janitor. She could have loved me, not that anomalous whore. Joe. I know you liked him, Dr. Yao, but you were too kind. You glossed over the issues on a psychiatric report. Maybe you knew about his drinking, but every good thing you did for him just fed his infatuation with you. Shut up. Just shut up, you bitch. You hadn't planned ahead, but everything you did after you killed her was clever, even daring. Emma must have told you about the doctored cameras, so you knew you hadn't been filmed. You left the cell, put the knife in the dishwasher, went back to the security station, and waited calmly for morning. You made sure to discover the body with D4986 as a witness, and took Dr. Yao's key to hide the fact that the door was unlocked. You gambled that Dr. Yao would wipe the door records to conceal her affair. Or perhaps, you were still trying to protect her. You carefully rolled the corpse over to explain any traces of blood on your clothing. And then, you guarded the scene. Just to be safe. Can we get security in, please? Leaving the Jack Daniels was a mistake, of course. But you didn't want to draw suspicion, so you were desperate. Fucking Lowry! You almost got lucky. So many other things were going on, your actions might have been obscured. But in fact, the solution in this case was one of the simplest explanations, and one of the oldest motives. We had a request from this room. This man is to be detained for questioning in connection with murder. You can take him away, officer. Recording ends. Final report. Afterward, author Agent Ellen O'Connor. Date, 24 December 2019. On further reflection upon this investigation, I wish to qualify my earlier conclusions. While I continue to believe that Officer Joseph Lowry is responsible for the killing of SCP-5002, I would recommend a degree of leniency from Foundation authorities when it comes to a sentence. In short... I am not certain that Officer Lowry is guilty of murder. The facts of this case are extremely complex, and while many of the parties responsible have admitted to their actions, there is the question of the involvement of SCP-5002. The key issue which remains outstanding is whether SCP-5002's own anomaly led to her killing. Starting with the basics, it appears that the Scranton Reality Anchors in scp 5002 cell were operative and were effective in preventing anomalous activity within the containment chamber. Equally, there are no written materials by SCP-5002 which correspond to the events of December 14th. I am, however, struck by the presence of those blank pages in SCP-5002's containment, cut into patterns of empty space. It is possible that, on further investigation with SCP-5002's novel, this will be revealed to be a grill cipher, revealing particular words and phrases in the text to form a secondary work. Could that work have been separately read by SCP-5002, causing different effects? The testing logs suggest that this may be possible. I recommend that this is investigated as a priority. In the meantime, ontological anomalies are notoriously difficult to detect. Perhaps the best method can be employed by future readers of this report. Has my work been structured as you would expect? First, a summary of my conclusions, and then the evidence to justify those conclusions? Has it instead taken a narrative tone. If true, 
My hypothesis may absolve Officer Lowry of some responsibility as the death of Emma Hastings would effectively be a suicide. It would also raise more questions than it answered. What was SCP-5002's motive for self-harm? If she made Lowry kill her, did she make Dr. Yell love her? Did she make Director May hate her? How far back does the chain reach? I was born when SCP-5002 was not yet four years old, well before she ever started writing. Joseph Lowry is 10 years older than SCP-5002. I believe that my life is my own. I believe that I choose my actions, that I think my thoughts, that they are not given to me. I believe I am real. Reader, I very much hope that you feel the same way about me and about yourself. This week's episode was brought to you by our patrons. Joining us this week was Just Ritz, Jodge, Ashley Little, The Socks Stay On, Strawberry Star Girl, Jules Me Wisson, Kelly Stratton, Sylvia Mann, Jigglepuff, JJ Knight 64, Prism, Laserbeak 1409, Indy K, Jeremiah Safford, Middle America, John Osario, Hera Ayas, and William Metzler. Thanks, guys. Your support means the world, and it helps us do what we do. SCP-5002 was written by P. Soul. Our host and narrator was John Grills. Agent O'Connor was Alyssa Park. D-2825 was Rissa Montanez. D-4986 was Sushant Atlaka. Director May was Janine Bauer. Dr. Grossenbacher was Nicole Goodnight. Dr. Yao was Melissa Lusk. J.R. Simpson was Russ Moore. Officer Lowry was Brandon Nguyen. SCP-106 was Anver Mahmood. And SCP-5002 was Madeline Moore. Our sound designer was Travis McMaster, and all of our music was done by the incredible Matt Roy Berger. And our theme song was done by Tom Rory Parsons. I'm your showrunner, Pacific S. Obadiah, and our producers are Tom Owen and Brad Miska. And this is a bloody disgusting show. For more information, visit scparchives.com.